Hi there, so I have an apology to make. Uh, for a long time, I've pointed people to this issue, telling them that they should never use the pre-published script because it, in, it runs npm install when users install their packages, uh, or it runs when user install their packages. And so if you have a pre-published script, it'll run that pre-published script when any of the people using your module install your, uh, your package. But uh, after thinking about it, um, of course, that's not going to happen um, unless you install all the dev dependencies as well, because a lot of people have um, dev dependencies or the pre-published script depends on dev dependencies. And so I never really actually thought about this um, like as much as I probably should have um, and just like took time to consider it. This issue is really long and I'm just going to give you the TLDR um, right around here. This guy. Um, explains it. So I misunderstood just like uh, Trustur did. Uh, so it won't run on end, end user systems only with npm install in dev. So that whoever's like developing the package, um, it's not as bad as I thought then. I was under the impression it always ran like post install for end users. So um, with that, I was actually going to create this video to demonstrate what I thought was happening where it runs on end user machines. Um, but in the process of creating an example for that, I realized that that's not what's happening at all. And so here I'm going to demonstrate exactly when uh, the pre-published script runs um, as far as I understand it now. So here I have this append superb unpublishing soon do not use because I am not going to be publishing this package or it's going, it is published, but it's not going to be published for long. So um, this has been published. So if we actually do um, npm I, or info and pass that in, we're going to see that uh, there's a version one available. And so if I were to go to um, a new directory and We'll just call it temp1. If I try to npm install that, I am going to be able to install it, and it is not going to run the pre-published script that I have specified here. It simply installs it, gives me a couple warnings because things aren't set up obviously for this project, but it doesn't run the pre-publish um, as I expected it would, and always thought that it did. Um, and so what that issue is talking about though is on the side of this package itself is where the pre-published script runs. So if I run npm install here, then this is gonna take a while um, and I'll, oh, here we go. Yeah, it's, so it's running that validate script, it's running my pre-published stuff, all of that um, after um, install has happened. And so to be clear again, um, npm install on a local package will be um, will run the pre-publish after the install. I'm not totally sure why that is. Um, there is a lot of words here that you can read into and and uh, look at more specifically um, why Forrest decided that's like the way that it should be. Um, but that's the way that it is. So I'll give you a couple of my own thoughts about this. Um, this could be useful to make sure that once you install dependencies that your stuff still works and runs. Um, and so having like a validate script here in a build, it's actually probably not an entirely bad idea. Um, however, um, I, I really, um, I, I still don't like the idea that pre-publish is running at a time when it's not entirely clear that it's, uh, it's actually running. I would, um, I actually am curious if I do a post install, I believe that this will in fact run um, when it's installed as uh, like from someone else. And so, um, yeah, let's see, I already have run the build and everything. So if I run publish here and then we'll uh, reinstall it over here, I'm using post install now. And I believe that the script will now run and it's going to fail because I'm uh, depending in this validate script, I'm depending on a couple dev dependencies. And so, yeah, you wouldn't want to run a post install or, or add a post install here. In fact, I would say that it's pretty rare that you ever want to have anything run 
um, on an end user's machine after your package has been installed or as part of your, your package's install. Just have everything already prepackaged for users um, when you publish it to NPM. Um, but uh, like there are some different uh, use cases for not doing that. Um, like Phantom, I, I think, like um, builds on the machine uh, for different environment reasons and stuff like that. But in general, for most packages, you don't want to have anything running on the end user's machine. Um, just have everything prepackaged and um, the user just downloads exactly what you have. Um, so yeah, I guess you could use a pre-publish here. Uh, it's, I guess it's kind of handy because then you can, here, we'll update this version just for the fun of it. Um, then you can just run npm publish and it'll run the build and do all that fancy stuff. Um, I don't really at this point see a serious problem with doing things this way. I just don't like it because it's um, unintuitive that npm install would run all of those things. It just doesn't really make sense to me. So um, yeah, hopefully, uh, oh, actually, so what I would recommend, just a couple of recommendations here, um, I would call this release, and then I would add npm publish. So this is much more explicit about what you're actually trying to accomplish, and then you can run npm run release, and it'll uh, run all of the things and then run publish, um, which I think makes a lot more sense. Um, another thing I would recommend that you look into is um, semantic release. This is a fantastic package to automate the releases of um, your um, of your library. And so there's this free course by yours truly on Egghead.io about how to use this thing. Um, this thing is amazing, and I totally recommend that you check it out. Um, and basically what it amounts to is um, when you add it to your project, it'll add a script called semantic release. And in here it'll be semantic release pre, and then it'll run npm publish, and then semantic release post. And um, it'll get rid of your version. And then um, in Travis, you have Travis run semantic release when um, like things are successful. And it will uh, the pre will uh, determine what version you should uh, be deploying based off of the current version on NPM and the commit messages that you have since then. And then it'll publish that version. And then for post, it will uh, generate a uh, GitHub release and, and create that and like create a change log and everything. It's awesome. So I definitely rem uh, like if you're if you care at all about doing releases and stuff, uh, this is a fantastic way to go. So but I can no longer shame anyone from using prepublish because it is totally valid. Um, and there's really not a problem with that. Uh, my apologies. Hopefully this um, hasn't harmed anyone. And uh, yeah, hopefully this has been helpful. See ya.